Hey guys, this is Theta. Um, this is a tutorial, or actually just a guide, on how to interpret texture formats inside of Brawlbox and figuring out which ones you're going to want to end up using when you go ahead and make your uh, you know, stages models, uh, character models, menu stuff, etc. Whatever you want to do, this is pretty much just a guide on all of these values right here. Um, and this is important for textures because it's finding out the best quality while taking up the least amount of space or how to do some cool stuff. So anyway, let's get into it. Um, so starting off, let's start with, just go down the list. Actually, let's start with CMPR because CMPR is the most common one and it's pretty basic. So uh, CPR, I'm going to open up Photoshop here too because it is, so it will make this easier. <laughs> uh, so... The important thing to know with textures is that the game doesn't read stuff like you'd imagine normally. Because um, there's a lot of values that go inside of textures um, per pixel, and that can be stored inside of whatever the game needs to. But important part is figuring out how the game reads that and applying that so you can have some cool looking stuff. So, I'm going to put this away here. And I'm going to... Okay, so this is a texture I have in Photoshop, right? It's of a visor for a Samus. And if I go ahead and open up... This is my export uh, window inside Photoshop. You can do this by uh, Control-Alt-Shift-S. And I'll open the Save for Web. Or I just call it the Export window. And this is uh, this will give you more information when saving images. So, when you are doing... Let's say you're doing PNG uh, 24. This is one format of PNG. Um... Uh, there's also PNG8, which is what C uh, what's called CMPR does. And I'm going to go ahead and set this to the default preset. Um, let me see here. There we go. So this is the 128, and I'm pretty sure the game actually can go up to 256 colors here. But uh, when I'm doing... CMPR and MIP levels, uh, that is for mip mapping. And so if I have, let's say, two or three, you can see the file size goes up. And what that does is it creates lower resolution versions of the texture that you can set in the material so it reads it when you're going further away with your camera. It will make it so it looks like the texture is less detailed by opening those other texture maps. However, but um, we're not going to go over those because they're not really important and you don't need to use them for your stuff. Um, if you're getting to that point, then I'll make another tutorial later on. But for now, we're just covering some basic stuff. So CMPR is your, is going to be your PNG8 in Photoshop. And what that means is that, um, first of all, it won't save any type of... Actually, I'm going to open up something that's transparent here. Um, import texture. What's on the desktop is transparent. Um, here we go. So in here, we have this this uh, piece of the morph ball that Samus uses. Um, you can see that it goes ahead and reads all the information for it. So, um, what's it called? I'm not sure what the transparent value actually here does, but um, I'm assuming that means that that's the amount of pixels that are transparent. Um, however, the reading these data isn't really important. I've actually never read this amount of stuff here. Um, Seeing what can be assumed from this is that, huh? That is interesting. Well, anyway, when you're going through all these types, CMPR will not read um, soft transparency, as I've told before in my other tutorial for basic information. Um, so inside here, you can see that if I go on, let's say RGB8, um, it has got these soft edges on the edge of this, and if I go to CMPR, it makes it so they're all hard edge. So CMPR only reads not transparent or transparent. And let's get into actually an important tip here uh, when thinking about the values that the game reads. Because um, most GLSL shaders with that, um, you know, and Brawl uses its own set of shader stuff, but it's going to be reading stuff similar to how most games do. And so you're going to have your red values, your green bl values, your blue values, um, your intensity values, which I will not go into, I'll go into later, but, and your alpha values, but, so all you really need to pay attention to is R, G, B, and A, which is red, green, blue, alpha. Um, so, CMPR cannot read, uh, alpha in any value besides 0 or 255, and let's think of 255 as the max, the 100% here, and, uh, 0 is obviously the 0%, so, it's saying, oh, this is 255%, you know, transparent. I mean, uh, <laughs> not transparent, which means that 
it is completely seeable. And this part here, would, anything that's less than half seeable inside CMPR textures when you import them will be made invisible. So that is how your texture gets red. Now the important thing to know here is, is that CMPR limits itself to around either 128 or 256. There's a certain limit of colors that it will not go over. Um, and the main thing that CMPR has problems with is reading colors between those red, green, blue uh, values. Um, so if I go ahead here instead and I try to import uh, a texture that has red and green touching each other, so you can see here in CI8, which is, I'll get into that later, or, um, since we're starting on CMPR, since, uh, the, right here, it's got these edges, and it creates kind of a between color, but it's like, you know, between red and green. So if I go to CMPR, you can see these edges are almost completely destroyed. Um, and that is because, as I said before, uh, CMPR is bad at reading color information between, t uh, two sets of the main colors that RGB, uh, works with. So... Um, that's you, if you have anything like that, this is also important when you're making models as why to separate out um, UV maps for certain things. Um, in this case, this is unavoidable because in this base texture, this is also put on top of each other. I was using this for a specular map. Um, but so uh, that's that's what CMPR has. So in textures, when you see like um, uh, you know artifacting um, like you're seeing here, it's because if there's values between that those values. So if I go ahead, I'm going to open up a uh, really detailed texture, like, uh, let's see me if I can find Samus's main texture here. So in here, um, I've got, this is main, Samus's main texture. If I I'll go ahead into CMPR, you can see it kind of looks a little, like, uh, notice around these edges here, it gets a little bit more blocky looking. Um, I'll go back for a second here. So you can see here, uh, it's a little bit cleaner. If I go to RGB8, that's the most clean it can get. So it's got, like right here especially, with this banding, where the uh, darkness is coming in for the red. If I go into CMPR, you can see that, um, what's it called? It's a little bit more banded here. And CMPR is good for reading colors that are of the same. So um, it actually looks smoother in some cases if you're having, like let's say, red go to red darkness. Um, if you have a straight uh, you know, uh, value like that. However... It's important to note that when you have colors mixing together like that, that's when I would not have that. So, uh, let's go to the next uh, set. I'm going to go through the uh, C, uh, C14, C18. Actually, no, let's go through the RGB values, because then we'll get to the more complicated ones later. Um, so, let's go to RGB65. Uh, uh, RGB65 does not read alpha whatsoever. So, as you can see, all the parts that were transparent before are now either filled in completely with black, white, or um, some color. So you can see, like, here, even though these pixels are not, you know, you can't see these pixels whatsoever, um, it is telling the game, or the, as at least, you know, it's, it's telling the texture that even though these pixels are transparent, they still have color to them. And so that's important because the game can read those colors when it can't read transparency there. So you can see, even though, you know, it, it wasn't there before, now it is. It's because those colors were there. And this is really cool, too, because you can see in some textures here for the game. Um, this is Metroid Prime. Uh, this is the model from Metroid Prime for Samus. Um, that this stuff here, this, these are all little palettes that they use to color Samus in, which I think is really cool to see. But um, so anyway, it can't read transparency. However, it does have a wider palette of colors, which means that it's going to look pretty smooth for the parts of the textures that you do need. So, if you need smooth textures and you do not need any um, transparency in your texture whatsoever, because, you know, it's not something that's actually transparent. And transparent, I'd mean like, um, for example, hair, fire, um, things that are partially transparent. You know, so or anything that's transparent. If you don't need any edges on your texture, it's just a solid surface. I would go with this one, it, except for a certain times. And there's other textures I'll tell you the types that I'll tell you about later. Um, let's get into RGB 5A3. So RGB obviously red, green, blue, alpha, and then three. So what's happening here is it can read the alpha, and it does pretty good at that actually. Um, I'm gonna go to something that's a little bit cleaner here. Um, import texture. Let's go to, if I can find something that has smooth edges on it. Um, actually, you know what I'm going to do here? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to exit out of this window. I'm going to open up Samus's body texture. I'm going to try to rework um, suit text. So on here, I'm going to go ahead and go to my layers. I'm gonna, I'm, all I'm going to do here is uh, blur the edges of something. So, J, and then filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Um, try to actually just... Filter, blur, 
blur and then control F to blur it as much as I can actually I can just do this hide that and then hide the rest of everything to and that looks pretty much uh, good save this and I actually I do want uh, mask there we go so now we have a good array of colors it looks pretty smooth inside the texture and uh, alright so um, now we have our texture, it's got good colors, it's got soft transparency so now um, this will be our reference texture if we go into RGB583 you can see here I'm going to make this as big as I can for you guys um, you can see that the edges here are really nicely displayed they're soft they look good um, however it's important to note that RGB583 cannot read as many colors as other ones um, when you're looking at these um, types I would compare this to I4 uh, where you see these ones with the four, that, that means it has less uh, detail. Because um, you can see here, A3, I mean, it seems, you know, it, it, it doesn't read as many. Um, and you can see, obviously, um, 565 or 65, you know, it most likely clamps it down to 64 for that. It can read a lot more colors, however, is the important thing to note. Um, so, for things where you need a ton of color, like rainbows, um, there's actually a difference for textures if you're importing from this and this, but let's go back to RGB 5.3 because I'm trying to keep this on track. It can read transparency pretty well. However, it's important to note that, as I said before, it can't read as many colors. So even here on the yellow, you can see there's kind of banding going on um, between this parts. So if I go back to RGB 6.5, that banding's gone. However, there's no transparency, obviously. It's so an RGB 8. This is your highest amount, and also it's keeping. It's an important to, thing to note that textures do take up size, as you can see, data size. Um, so I will list in really quickly in order the amount of size that all these textures takes up. CMPR and I4 take up the least amount of te of uh, space, and then next is going to be I8 um, and CI4. After that, it's going to be CI8 and IA4, and then IA8. Um, what's it called? Actually, let's go and uh, compare this real quickly. Um, 524, 24, okay. So I thought, 31. Okay, all right. So, um, let's let's go through this one by one. Actually, 130 well, CMPR is the most compressed you can possibly get, which means that it is going to have the least amount of size. So you can see 131,000 bytes. Um. And then for I4, it's the same amount of bytes. However, um, I4, actually, that's how, that's how, that's how I'll do this. Uh, CMPR and I4 both take up the same amount of space. But now to explain I4, I4, just like RGB 6.5, cannot read alpha whatsoever. And it does not have much color information. So um, you can see how there's a benefit where CMPR would have a lot more priority because it can read transparency and colors pretty well. Um, it doesn't get as much, you know, detail, but when you have smooth colors that don't mix between each other, like the RGB, you know, red, green, blue as much, um, it's a pretty good choice to go with. That's why a lot of people use it. Um, that's why it's used a lot even by Nintendo, obviously. Um, so I4 ca uh, can't read color. It can only read intensity. That's what the I stands for. I is intensity. Um, and the important thing to note here, too, is that when you do something as I4, it will actually import it into Brawlbox and making it so that not only does it read this everything and it turns into black and white, but the more light something is, the more you will be able to see it. So it will also say, like, for example, this dark metal here, it will also work for transparency now. So if you have a texture that's non-transparent and you want to have transparency based on how bright stuff is, that's how you can do this with this I8. That's why a lot of black and white textures are in I8 or I4. Um, is because it reads it also as alpha. So intensity means, you know, obviously black and white values. It's the amount of, uh, uh, you know, intensity f per pixel, which means, like, uh, you know, the brighter it is, is more intense, and then the least intense you can get is a complete black. Um, and so I8 is just like I4, can't read transparency, but it's got some, it's got more detail. It's nice. It's got, um, you know, it's got a good amount of uh, detail to it. So I, I for detailed like reflection stuff like that I would that's what I usually use I A for I A for is intensity plus alpha which um and honestly I don't use I I A for I A and I think they're pretty useless because if you can already read um you know all this is alpha most of the time you're going to use I four is for reflection textures and the like 
Um, however, you don't need to have it as the alpha inside the shaders. You can edit that later. Um, but you know, like if you're already reading this, there's not much point in the alpha unless you want to contain an extra map in it. But well, that's pretty useless. Um, I8 is the same thing, but it reads more color, just like how I8 works, but it can read alpha too. Um, RGB65 we already went over, and RGB583. Um, how you can tell now, these two are the exact same in data format, so they both take up 524,000 bytes for this texture. So they both take up the same amount, but however, there's different advantages for each one. One reads alpha and uh, has less detail, while the other one does not read alpha but has more detail. Um, and then after that, RGBA8 obviously is the most size you can possibly take up. Um, it's double of both the prior ones. However, it reads the most color. It reads the best alpha. It's the best type there is. So people usually use it for really small, like, you know, t small textures that they need a lot of information in, because uh, it makes it look nice in game. But it takes up a lot of size. Next is the CI4 and CI8. Um, this is for color values, and it, it takes the intensity. Uh, and four, but it can read alpha, which is important. Um, so now what happens is when you in use either of these formats, um, you are going to get. Uh, sorry, um, checking something really quickly. Okay, so when you use CI4 or CI8, you're going to get a palette option, and I wouldn't suggest changing this from what it does. Um, it, I I wouldn't mess with this, but. Um, it, um, algorithms always going to be medium cut, pretty much. Uh, colors as for C14, you can only store 16 colors. That like total, like that's it. You can only store 16 colors in the entire texture. Um, so I don't use it that often because it's not very detailed. Um, it is important to notice though. It is C14 and uh, what's it called? Yeah, C14. While it doesn't take up much size. Um, it takes about as much size as CMPR would. The difference is, is that C14 can read a little bit better alpha. It can read like 50% uh, alpha, 75% alpha, and 25% alpha. And I might even it might even be able to read 30, 60, and 90% alpha. Um, but it does not have nearly as much color information, so I wouldn't use this one very often. CI8, however, is a very popular texture format. I use it a lot because um, it's low size. It's got, you know, it still has the banding here and the textures, but it does have good transparency. You can see the soft edges still are preserved somewhat. Um, and even though there's banding, depending on the texture, it's good to use because it can get you some good uh, colors and stuff without having, you know, uh, without losing that transparency information. So if you need transparency, this one's pretty good. Um, it also can read a little bit. Uh, it can't read as clear textures, I mean colors, as C CMPR. CMPR, I believe, can go up to 512, while CI8 is limited to 256 colors. And you can turn this colors um, amount down, 128, for example. Um, and you can see the color, the size goes down by a tiny bit, but there's not much, much, you know, point to doing it. Um, so I wouldn't. Um, and RGB, this is, this is different types of, uh, you know, uh, for formats for the palette here, because what happens is when you use these two, it creates a color palette um, inside of the texture area. So, for example, I'm gonna go ahead and do this, and I'm gonna use. Uh, usually, it's gonna use RGB 5A3, because um, that's just how it works, I guess. Um, you can use IA8 if you want to. You can really mess around with these. Um, if you're going to use CI8, um and you want the color to remain there. Let's say, so for example, let's say I want this, none of this alpha is actually going to be used in the texture. Excuse me. None of this alpha is actually going to be used in the texture. So I could say, I want this to be RGB 6.5, uh, obviously. You know, because uh, it has good color value. It can be, um, you know, it can, it, it, it can get some good colors. Um, and sometimes it can even be better than CMPR, depending on how, uh, how you have it formatted. Um, or if you need good alpha, but you don't have many colors in your texture, that's what I would use our uh, RGB 3 and I, it's the most used one. It's set that by, de by default, so I, in more, most cases I just wouldn't change it. Um, but let's go ahead and import the second screen I'm talking about here. When you import it, it also uh, imports. A, there's palettes here, so you can see reference texture now has this palette. So this is all of the information for that color palette. So you can see 
all of these different colors and alphas. You can see alpha zero, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. This is all the color information from that texture. And there's only two, there's 255 of them because zero counts. There's 256 total. Um, so now, if I was going to use, uh, let's say, in a material here, if I'm going to use this texture, see where it says palette here? You have to turn this on if you're using a CI8 texture. In, um, because otherwise it will show up black and white by the game and it won't appear right. Um, so that that that's what that's you have to do that for every single um, RGB 53 and that's why I don't recommend CI8 or CI4 for animations because then you have to go through and do twice as many entries for those animations uh, and I'm talking about texture animations here like palettes um, or excuse me pattern text uh, animations so that's why I wouldn't do that um, because he has palette is true so like in animations you'd have to set that to true as well um, so I wouldn't recommend it but um, so that that's all there really is for that type of uh, stuff and so now if you go ahead I'm gonna show you let's go over it one more time really quickly all right um, so CMPR low detail uh, no alpha or complete alpha and it has the lowest file size possible uh, CI8 has good transparency n it has average average uh, color and it, uh, it makes a palette which makes it bad for animations CI4 it has good transparency, but it's not really good for color, and again, it makes a palette, so it's not good for animation. So that's why I wouldn't recommend using it. RGBA8 takes up a ton of file size, but it gets the best color you can possibly get, and has really good transparency. Uh, RGB5A3 is good for alpha, not really good for color. It's It does not hold as many colors, but it does... And it has a lot of file size, too. It's still up there in the file size. Um, so, generally, don't want to have a lot of these types of textures. Um, RGBC, uh, RGB 6.5 does uh, not support alpha. However, there's good colors inside here, and it blends in pretty well. Um, and it doesn't need a palette, so it's pretty useful for that. Uh, however, it's still pretty high in file size. IA8 only reads the alpha and the black and white, which means the intensity for each of the pixels. So it can't read color, but it does have good alpha, as you can see here. The It does have good alpha, and um, it has pretty nice... There's no there's not much banding in the texture itself between where there was color. Uh, IA4 uh, does not have really good uh, values that it can read, and... However, it can read pretty good alpha. It's it's kind of like a black... These two colors are pretty much black and white versions of CI4 and CI8. Um, moving on to I8. I8 does not support uh, alpha whatsoever. However, it does have extremely good um, like pers like detail inside the texture. You're not going to get too much banding. You're going to get high detail. Um, it's going to look pretty nice. But again, it doesn't support... Um, alpha however it will say to the game the game will read this if you cho so choose it to so if you say in the sh in the shader you choose texture alpha and you have this type even though it doesn't show up as alpha the game's going to read the black and white amounts in here as alpha and so the same thing is for i4 however um obviously it doesn't have a any alpha itself it doesn't have good color perception, which means it's not gonna have. It's gonna have a lot of this banding type looking stuff, and however, it does have really low file size. So, um, and f so for i4, if I'm doing like a reflection texture or something like that, so you have something like um, uh, let's see here, if I can find a reflection here, <laughs> suit reflection. So this is a reflection texture. So for example, if I'm wanting this to be um, i8 that takes up a lot less file size. Uh, what's it called? CMPR is what it currently was, I believe. No, it's RGB 6.5. So you see, it's 8,000 whatever, and so if I turn to I8, it's black and white now. However, it's got some pretty nice looking um, uh, file size there. It's almost it's like half. And so I4, you can see, it does not have as much perception or detail there. Um, but it does have the lowest file size. So if you have really simple reflections and stuff like that, I4 is pretty good for that. Um, and so I hope that is detailed enough for you guys. Um, I tried to put as much information as I could inside this as a hopefully quicker guide. I know it's probably pretty long for a guide on texture types. However, um, it's always good to learn. And I've been wanting to, I, now that I fully understand the texture types and what they can do, um, I hope this tutorial can help you. 
All right. Uh, for the next, uh, I guess, request one, you can put it inside the, the comments, and I'll uh, look and see what the next tutorials would be. Um, thanks. See you guys.